I'm going to the book of St. Matthew chapter 13. And then we will be looking at St. Luke chapter number 12, verse 48. Matthew 13, verse 9 and 12, through 12. And then Luke chapter number 12 and verse 48. And uh, to all those that watch online regularly, thank you for your support. Father, we send a special prayer for Benjamin, that he would be touched and healed. A special prayer for Victor, that he would be found and blessed and in his right mind. In the name of Jesus, amen. And his disciples came. They, they were with him for several days. There was a phenomenal manifestation of the move of the Spirit in the last part of chapter 9. And he healed every person in every town, in every city, in every village, every sickness. Chapter 9, the last three verses, and says, our challenge is we don't have enough laborers. In chapter 10, he names the apostles in their rank and assigns them with the message and empowers them with miracles, signs, and wonders and says, from this day, you won't need to go with money. You won't need to go with a sword. You won't need to go with clothes because from this day, it's all provided for you. It's all provided for you. And then in chapter number 12, he deals with hierarchical challenges that are in the heavens. Talking about binding the strong man in chapter number 12, in the middle, binding the strong man, binding cities. He that is stronger than you has got to be bound. And he gives us an insight. And then in chapter 13, now that they are fully fledged apostles and have demonstrated that by the works that they performed since their appointment, he's now we're going to trust them with a category of true riches, which is revelation knowledge. And so they came to him after being empowered and said to him, why do you speak to the people in parables, which is word pictures, which is a heavenly story with an earthly meaning. And he says to them, he answered and said to them, because it is given to you to know, to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. To you, it is given. To them, it is not given. And so, because it's not given to them, to understand mysteries, I have to speak to them in word pictures. I don't speak to you in word pictures. I speak to you in mysteries. To know the kingdom of heaven. Verse 12. For whosoever has, to him it shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever does not have, from him shall be taken away even that which he has. Let me give you a quick example of what that means. You have a building. Much will be given to you because you have a building. Children, youth, music. Uh, this is Jurassic Park music, uh, marriage ministry, and there might be somebody down the road who starts a church and means well and does not have a building. What he has will be taken away from him because he cannot serve the city without a building. So what he has cannot be maintained. It will be taken away and be brought to somebody that has. Are we together? Just, just briefly, and there's many examples. I just want to give that one. I'm now in Luke 
chapter 12 and verse 48. This is in the middle of the verse to expedite the time. He's talking about persecution and so on. And in part B of Luke chapter 12, verse 48, for everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, to him they will ask for more. For a few minutes, my message is entitled, It Has Been Given to You. Show up. It has been given to you. Show up. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Bishop Davis has always been so very kind to me and so loving. Uh, a human being never forgets kindness and acts of kindness. And for that, we want to thank you. God bless you so much. And, of course, Lady D, God bless you. Uh, some people have to work on being hospitable. Uh, today we went to a southern type restaurant because we wanted to eat some home food. Uh, and so we had some real fried chicken and real mashed potatoes uh, and real, for the first time on this trip, real sweet tea. But we were treated to Southern hospitality. The waitress that served us, it was naturally in her to be loving and kind and extra mileish and so on. And you can't do that to me without me going crazy because I will make sure that I give twice as much as the price of the food itself. And I was thoroughly impressed. And uh, so there are people that are not that we're inclined. They have to work on being nice. And if you're not a nice person, work on being nice. Turn to your neighbor and say, be nice. <laughs> Just be nice. Now, of course, Hippocrates told us about five, four temperaments and, and the joinings of those temperaments can produce subsidiaries of maybe eight different types of temperaments. Sanguine, choleric, melancholy, uh, phlegmatic. I'm, I'm totally sanguine. I'm just crazy. I'm sanguine. I, I'd show up in an orange suit if it wasn't for Chi Chi, you know, and rainbow. Uh, maybe that's not the right word to use, but, but colors of, of, of many colors, <laughs> uh, socks, etc. And uh, my room, for crying out loud, is painted orange. And uh, I'm, I'm very sanguine. I'll give everything away. And so, uh, it's, I can hug everybody. I'm just a hugger, you know. And all of those wonderful things that go with it. And so, when you have phlegmatic people who are generally a little bit more withdrawn, uh, reserved, introverts, etc., uh, it doesn't mean that because you're an introvert, you're not a nice person. Because you can have a sanguine person who's very caustic and very overbearing. Cholerics tend to be that way, but... You know, uh, nice most times is a choice. Turn to your neighbor and say, just be nice. <laughs> you know, you can be calling chords five, four, eight, seven, one. You can be calling those. And you can call them nicely. You can call them yelling. You can text a message. Uh, and you can text your entire message with bold capitals, which means you are yelling. Be nice, baby. Be nice. <laughs> and when you speak the truth, you can speak the truth in love. I, I don't even know why I'm here. That's not on the notes. But somebody here just needs to be nice. Whoever you is. <laughs> Are you clapping for somebody that needs to be nice? And so, so when we're dealing with the, the very broad subject to whom much is given, Z, I can't see you. Are you here? It's just driving me up the wall. Uh, wave your hand if you're here. If, if much has been given to you, 
much is required. And so uh, God starts by the example. He is the mighty, almighty, the sovereign, unquestioned, uh, effervescent, omnipotent, omnibus, omniscient, omnipresent God. He's all light, he's all love, he has no weakness. His weakness is human beings. That, that's his weakness. And uh, his weakness, a person can brutally and, and, and uh, uncategorically with purpose despise God and then turn around and tell God, I love you and worship God and God will receive them. That's his weakness, you know. You can make him mad, you can find grace. He put you in the bottom of a sea, in the belly of a fish, and let that acid on a fish peroxide your hair. And, and when you repent, he still loves you and, you know, that's just God. But you don't want to make him mad enough where, or, or if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you're in trouble. But God is, is all of those things. But because to whom much is given, uh, God has to give much. So God gave his spirit. He gave his spirit so generously that he cut man out of his spirit. When he made Adam, he just cut a piece of himself and made Adam in his image and his likeness. So the reason God couldn't destroy man is because he would be destroying his image and his likeness. And so we are a cut from the old cloth. God gave his essence. That's why every human being around the world, whether they are pygmies in the Congo, whether they are aborigines in the depth of Australia, or, or people that uh, are discovered in Papua New Guinea that don't have an actual journey of religious anchor to Christianity, wherever you might be in the world, whether you are in India with thousands of expressions of gods, human beings want something to worship. Because of the essence of God, they want to receive love, receive accolades, receive worship. And so all human beings around the world are the same. When we cry, we shed tears. When we laugh, we express a certain uh, uh, emotion. And so you can go to any baby hospital in the world and they can have a thousand babies born on the same day, fly them in, the, pair, the mother's in, fly them in, and, and then get the babies to cry. Every baby that cries, you will never be able to tell, no matter how good you are, you'll never be able to tell which is a Caucasian baby, a Chinese baby, because they don't cry with an accent. Z, I just asked you to put up your hand and you walked in. God bless you, Z, in April. And so they don't cry with an accent because God doesn't have an accent. And so my little sister making the announcements, I, I didn't hear a word you said. You spoke so fast, you got this accent, this draw, and everybody was like agreeing with her. I said, they could be agreeing to 10 years of cooking lunch for. And so accents then come, and we may get to that. Hurry up, Judah. And so God gave his love. God gives love. And he expressed that in loving the world and giving his son. God gave his light. And there are various expressions of light. We can't receive all light because it's very destructive. But, you know, I count everything. I was counting the panels. There's 19, 17, 15, 12. I'm asking myself, why are there that many panels? Why is there that, mu that much light? Why are the cameras in the dark? I'm asking all these questions. Because I want to know. I'm a student. And so God gave uh, uh, from a light of a candle to a light that blinded Saul that was brighter than the sunlight. And then he also gave light with his illumination. And so with Stevie Wonder who has never seen light has greater light than most people in the world. He's in the top 1% of all intelligence because he sees what others don't see and expresses that in his ridiculous music. 
ridiculous in terms of its qualitativeness, the lyrics, he's a lyricist, he's a melodist, he's a philosopher, uh, he's a historian, he's a culturalist, an etymologist, uh, an epistemologist, he's all of that in one. And so not being able to see physically doesn't mean that you can't see. And so God then shared his thoughts. I'm taking too much time with that. He gave his mind, his words, his hands, his image, his likeness. God gave heaven. He gave celestial beings in the heavens. He gave invisible things, seen things, visible things. God gave the universe, the converse, con cosmos that possesses tangible things. Then God gave principles. Once applied, successful. Once violated, you shafted. God gave his ways. If you follow his ways, you'll have life. And he gave choices, free moral agency. Choose life and not death. Choose blessing and not cursing. If you follow these principles, you get that. And so in giving those, he provides the guidelines, the ways. He provides the pathways for us. And so uh, what happens is an enemy, generally the devil and the system he's created, is trying to take that away from the family of man. God then brings his son into the world and brings Jesus, for which we celebrated his crucifixion uh, and his resurrection this past week, to commemorate God's love for humanity, to redeem, buy back what the enemy has taken from the family of man. And, and that is basically to have dominion, to, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, do you have dominion? Genesis 1, 26, 27. 28. And so when we are redeemed now, brought back, we now have to start interrogating the fact that uh, I now understand a little bit more of the purpose of God for my life through salvation. And there are people that discover their purpose in life that are not Christians, that you don't have to be Christians to discover your purpose. But, but it is the will of God that all should repent and that none should perish. But there are people that have not repented that are still fulfilling a role in the earth to improve the quality of human life, which is God's ultimate goal for every human being. And I don't want to get into uh, some avenues here because we'll be here all night. And I don't know Lionel Richie that well. And so then God gave apostles. He gave us, the church. He gave apostles, Ephesians 4.11. Prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. For, for the edification of the church. To build up the body of Christ. To strengthen the church. So that the gospel of the good news. The good news. What's the good news? 18, 4.18 of, of Luke that my mandate, my manifesto, is to preach the gospel to the poor. In other words, I hate poverty. That's what he's saying. I hate poverty. And so the first thing the devil does to Adam, he makes him a pauper, strips him of everything, and throws him in poverty. Takes away his covering, which is his glory. Takes away... Uh, his ingenuity, his creative mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. Adam couldn't think anymore, so he didn't know who he was. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. He destroyed Adam's mouth. He brought the curse out of his mouth. He destroyed Adam's hand because everything Adam touched in the garden was turning into life. Adam couldn't decipher uh, what was now thorns and thistles and food. So he destroyed Adam's ability to see, to hear, because God never spoke to Adam ever again. There's no record of it. He spoke to Cain. Abel's offering spoke, but God never spoke to Adam. And so Adam had to learn how to speak God words. He had to learn to speak to a mountain. What he had naturally, he had to learn again. And that's why it took generations for humanity to come to a, a place of dominion. Be, because what he had was taken away from him 
and given to another. Are we together? And so, so the fact that you saved, I celebrate that. Don't lose your salvation. But don't be an ignorant Christian. And don't be a poor believer. For crying out aloud, get rid of that old Corolla. Get yourself a good Mercedes Benz. I don't even like Ranger Rover. Give me a break. Don't waste your time on a BMW. Get yourself a good vehicle. Get yourself a house that doesn't make sense. And let people talk about you because they're talking about you anyway. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to show up. Come and say, you got to show up. <laughs> oh, it's going to get good eh, in a minute. And so, so there are principles that God has put in place to get that, that's the heaven, that invisible, the intangible, to get to us. And what God has used is the birthing process. And so it's painful. It, so anytime you're experiencing pain, something's coming out on the other side. And so what happens is, is... All things must travel through faith's birth canal. Must travel through faith's birth canal. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because if something doesn't travel through faith's birth canal, it comes out cursed. And cursed is the man who leans on the arm of flesh, Jeremiah 17-ish. But blessed is the man who leans and trusts in the Lord. And so when something comes through labor with faith in God, God will say, I don't like Ishmael. He's a work of the flesh. I love Isaac. He's a work of faith. I can use Jacob because things don't come naturally to him. Esau Leans naturally. He's a man's man. In daughter, I'm a daughter. He's a man's man. He's hungry. He can find it. He can kill it. He's too lazy to cook it. He'll eat it raw. Jacob needs some time to get some things done. And that's shown why he works for 20 years for Laban and doesn't get anything in return. He's just wanting to kiss Rachel. Just like, I just want to kiss that girl. I want to kiss the girl. I want to kiss the girl. I want to kiss the girl. And the fool is going to work with such great gift for 20 years just wanting to kiss the girl. And lands up with all kinds of baggage along the way just because the first time he kissed her, the Bible says the man started crying. What a kiss. The Bible says that when he kissed Rachel, he cried. She sucked the life out of that boy. Like, <laughs> and he worked 14 years for Rachel. It's okay. It's okay. Say, it's okay. Amen. I'm safe. Hallelujah. I'm safe. And in Genesis chapter number 30, in Genesis 29, Jacob came to himself. He was like, I'm better than this. My, my, my dad's servants aren't, aren't treated as bad as this. I have four women that's given me 11 and a half children. And I'm working like a slave here. And when he says, I'm leaving Laban's sons, the goofheads, said to their sisters, we know that our father is blessed for your husband's sake. Convince him to stay. And so the thing is that there are times in a person's life when, when, when you, you, you are so blessed, much has been given and you don't even know it. That molestation, that hurt, that bad job, Uncle George, what he did to you, what, what Auntie Gertrude said about your way back then, 
as, as, as a slight at your life and you don't even know who you is. You need Rafiki to hit you on the head and say, you don't even know who you are. Can, can I preach like, like I'm at home here? So manifestation has got to take place sooner than later. You've got to make up your mind and you have to be disciplined that this is my direction. This is what I'm going to do. It's going to take this much time. And if it hair lips the devil, I'm going to do it. I, I'm, going, I, I am embarking on this journey. And at some point in my life, there will be manifestation. Can I preach to you in my expensive ostrich boots? Amen. And so, just still by way of a slight introduction, uh, poverty is the number one killer in the world. In Africa, malaria is the number one killer. But the thing is that it's a result of poverty. That little mosquito causes a lot of problems. And with money, we can avert a lot of unnecessary deaths. And poverty is the problem in Southside Chicago. Poverty is the problem in Compton. Problems the, poverty is the problem in any place where you see confusion and problem. The author on confusion is demonic. God is not the author of confusion. So even in church, if there's a department where confusion breaks out, there's a devil involved. And it's very easy for a loving saint, a sanguine, melancholy woman of God, prays every day, it's very easy for a woman or a man whom you've trusted for so long to become an agent for confusion. It's very easy. It can happen that quick. You can say, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then you can say to Jesus, ah, you are not going to Calvary in the same chapter. And the message version or one of the versions will say, Jesus said to Satan, you are an antagonistic agent from Satan. Get behind me. He just got the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That's our quick it can happen. Amen. So you got to stay on your guard at all times. Amen. Shout, I'm going to manifest. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. I am going to manifest. Amen. Amen. And so, so poverty it has got to go. If you are willing and if you are able and, and if you are free to, you can repeat this prayer after me. I hate, I hate poverty. I despise poverty. I despise For the rest of the years of my life on this earth, the war against poverty is going to increase. Now, talk to poverty, you have got to go. My mandate is to remove poverty. Yeah, yeah. And so if, 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 if stuff has not happened in a previous generation, it starts happening with me. If rubbish happened in a previous generation, it ends with me. No more. No more. Devil, don't you talk to me that way. You don't know who I am and you don't know what I stand for. But one thing I know that poverty has got to go. You can't live in my house and you can't be in my mind and you can't live in my life. Shout, poverty, you've got to go. Cl clap your hands because poverty has to pick up its bed and walk out of your life and walk out of your neighborhood and walk out of your crazy head and walk out of Birmingham. It better go and find itself a hole in the gulf somewhere and never come up out of the sea again. Poverty, you got to go into the swine and dump yourself in a bunch of pigs in the sea, never to be seen again. Yeah. 
The reason Jesus allowed the demons that made a very rich man, a very gifted man, a very able man, 6,000 plus devils in him. The, the reason Jesus allowed those demons to go into 2,000 pigs, he's telling the 2,000 years coming from Calvary that nobody is going to get a slice of any of that meat. You will not eat of any demonic piece of poverty. So the demonic bacon has got to go. Government ham has got to go. Pig feet that make you walk in poverty have got to go. Cast that devil into the sea. Are you all allowed to high five yet? Amen. Just, just high five. It just make like you want to high five someone. There's a trainer coming. There's a trainer coming. Something is coming tonight that's about to jack roll your life forever. You are going to manifest in the next few months in 2022. Where blessings that are coming, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over are coming to your life. You can't handle the volume of what's coming because to whom much is given and much is coming. If it's being given, it's on its way. It's on its way. I might just preach up in here tonight to tell the devil and his mother-in-law that something big is on the way. For the next, the next eight years, I'm going to give you a little list of what the world, please, please behave yourself, amen, you are really, you, you really, you just sit down, after this you're going to need some money, amen, the, the, the next, the next eight years are crucial globally. Here are a list of some things. I have a list of 22. I'm going to give you a handful of what the world needs globally. That's the family of man. Number one, we need global peace. Because wealth cannot be built corporately if there's war and tension and people killing each other. The gun industry doesn't make sense. Someone's getting rich at the expense of young people's lives. The Ukrainians are getting the, the, the life bombed out of them. It doesn't make sense. We're not even sure what the reason for that is. There are a couple of wars in Africa that don't make sense. They got to just beat it out. We need global peace. And so Jesus was born in a time of peace. Because Christ cannot be born in a time of war. So when uh, Augustine uh, said, uh, not Augustine, Augustus, emperor, said, the entire, the, the entire empire has to do a census. It meant now there has to be peace. Jesus is the prince of peace. He's going to be born in a season of peace. And in that season of peace, prosperity began. Prosperity began. So we need global peace. Africa will not have prosperity if there's no peace. Your home will not have prosperity if there's no peace in your home. Your church organization, whatever it is, will not grow if there's no peace. Your boat will never get to the other side until the ocean is told to shut up and come to peace. The church started on a message of peace. My first message when I rise from the dead, the first thing out of my mouth Jesus said was, Peace be with you. He will keep you in perfect peace if you stay. Keep your mind. May the God of peace. So God wants peace in your life. Say, Father, give me peace. Amen. What's the symbol of peace? Amen. It's like, it's like a white flag or a blue beret for the United Nations. Number two, global health. 
Number three, number three, we need access to major finance. You need some money. You really, you need some money. You need a lot of money. A hundred million dollars is not enough for you. You need, a, you need, you need a half a billion dollars just to get started for what God wants to do. You, you need, you need a half a, and if that's a, if, if that's a five hundred million dollars, it means that through the hands of people here at Refresh, it means at least five billion dollars has got to exchange hands. Because 10% belongs to this place. So you push a $500 million budget, he will push a $5 billion budget right here in the hands of people who never thought they could, but are about to manifest and money is coming from everywhere. My God, a bird will fly money from the Federal Reserve. A rat will carry money to you. God will multiply your oil in the middle of the night. You won't even know that your five loaves had so much capacity. Shout manifest. And so that's number five. Number five. Number, number four, we need think tanks. Thinkers, not reactors and emotional people. We love emotion. We need thinkers, deep thinkers. We need talent pools. We need, there's no reason why you guys on the front have to keep on reinventing the wheel. We just need a pool of leaders where you get together and, and you share your lawyers with him. You share your builders with them. You share your money with all of us. You look like you got some, amen. Amen. Share with a beard like that. You got to have some money. I'm just taking out those shoes. Amen. Yeah. So why do you have to have your own Bible school and your Bible school and your Bible school and your Bible school and your college for sisters uh, uh, pr uh, prophecy meetings? Somebody can do that. We can all support. But if I send my people to your Bible school, don't you try to steal them for your church. Educate them in kingdom principles to make Davis better. Don't you never say manifest. You got to grow up and manifest. Amen. We can manifest. We can all eat. We can all eat. Isn't it amazing? You can go to a, a steak, a steakhouse. And you can still order chicken in a steakhouse. You can order fish in a steakhouse. And if you don't like tilapia, you can have a salmon. If you don't like salmon, they'll give you a trout. If you don't like trout, they'll give you uh, a grouper. If you don't like grouper, they'll find a shark for you somebody. Because somebody from the hood is there. Amen. I was at a curry restaurant the other day. There was a man at a curry and rice restaurant. A curry and rice restaurant. There's a man having steak and potatoes. I'm like, what is the matter with you? Just go across the road. But at a curry joint, they had steak available. It's all in the house. It's all here. The curry, the Cracker Barrel people, the Waffle House guys. The J.C. Penney's, the Dillard's, everybody that's needed to do something is in the house. I'm calling for you to manifest. We need the think tank. Shout, Lord, help me to manifest. Clap your hands for manifestation. So that's only four. There's 22 of those. But the thing is now is, is learning to believe. See, it's learning to believe. We all believe, but most of us believe the wrong thing. And so we believe we're ugly, we're, 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 we're not so light, or we're light, or, or, or we're ignorant, or we're stupid. I, I was told as a 12-year-old boy, oh, you stink so bad, you smell so bad. So you can ask Chi Chi, uh, from that time when I became an adult up until today, I can use one bottle of cologne in, in just over a week. Because I spray everywhere. I spray my shoes. I spray everywhere. I just like spray. Because nobody will ever say that to me again. Because what was said to me damaged me inside almost perpetually. Oh yeah, baby. I spray my running shoes. You better hear me now. 
And so, 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 I believed for many years the wrong thing. The wrong thing. I walked into a church the other day. I thought, is that me? Is that me? Is that me? I got to run back there. Shh. Like that woman that came in with an alabaster box and broke it all over me in the in the restroom. <laughs> and so what has to happen is in most churches, that's why these kinds of ministries that we have, like refresh and whatever your church's names are, you, you, you have to teach people how to believe again. And Whitney was right. The, the greatest, the greatest love of law all is learning to believe in yourself. I'm here for a purpose. I, I didn't die between 20 and 22. I'm still here. COVID couldn't touch my life. I lost somebody. It's unfortunate. My tears are still flowing every day. Uh, but I'm still here. There's a reason I'm a survivor. There's a reason that accident did not take me out. There's a reason that cancer could not stay in my body. My God, I'm, you might even become a doctor, baby girl, and graduate as a doctor, as an oncologist, and save girls in India. Who knows what God has in mind for you, Mary Magdalene, when he cast out seven devils, each devil for every dimension, each devil for a day of the week, each devil for a candlestick of the seven candlesticks, each devil for the seven church ages. He cast out the devil because you were willing to let that devil come out. You are going to be the first one to see him standing in the midst of the candlesticks. And so there's a reason you hear. Call your name out three times. Tudor, there's a reason I'm here. There's a reason. Or Tudor, there's a reason I am here. Come on, call your name out. Tudor, there's a reason I am here. Say it with emphasis. Tudor, there is a reason I am here. Tudor, there is a reason I am here. The reason that devil is fighting you is because he's got a sense as to what the reason is that you are here. There's a reason you are here tonight. There's a reason. My God, I feel like preaching to someone here. You have to believe. And there's all kinds of agencies that, that, that come against you to make you not believe. And so you can know that Jesus has the answer. And you can say, please help me. My daughter's dying. She's 12 years old. And, and I, she's got stomach cramps and and she's about to have her first menstrual cycle. And, and the devil's trying to kill my daughter. She's got a high fever. And, and so he says to Jairus, I will come and heal her. And so while he's on his way to go and heal this, this young girl who has a chance of reproducing the next generation. And the devil wants to mess with her reproductive system and kill her before she can reproduce produce after her kind which is a, an eligible woman of God a woman who has been impeded with a blood condition for 12 years in other words when the little girl was born this woman got sick and couldn't leave the house the older women supposed to teach the younger woman and so the generations are mixed up on his way to go and release the purpose on a 12 year old girl. A woman comes out of the room and says. I believe. <laughs> that if I touch the hem. Of his garment. I should be made whole. So baby. This sickness for 12 years. Has been good for you. Because it taught you. How to believe. One step. For every tribe in Israel. One step. For every apostle. So the 12 years is to show the apostles. That someone who's isolated. Someone who's nobody. Someone who's sick. Had had grown faith. One year for each of you apostles. To believe that God is able. To do exceeding abundantly above all. God wants you to learn how to believe. Shout, Lord, help me believe. So, 
And so she comes out the house and Jairus says, you hurry up, man, hurry up. You hurry up, we're, just, we, we're not gonna have another child. Oh, come on, hurry up, hurry up. And the people are pressing and pushing. Jesus, I need a BMW. Jesus, I, I need a first class ticket. Yeah. Jesus, I need some new teeth. Yeah. Jesus, I need some hair. I, I need some Brazilian hair. I need a weave, man. Come on, Jesus. You know how we do in church? I need some new shoes. Man, Jesus, you see that man's watch? I need a watch. And, and so they all push him. And this woman touched him. And Jesus, I just got touched. Someone's life is changing here. And Jairus says, please, 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 you know. And so some guy comes and says, don't trouble the master. Your daughter is dead. Well, number one, how do you know that Jesus is being troubled? Who are you to tell Jesus that he's being troubled? You nobody, man. You're just like a voice. Just don't let anybody speak on your behalf. That is, unless you are 18 years and above. If you're 18 years and below, I'm speaking on your behalf. Amen. You're not doing jack without my permission. What means I hear it? And don't you think that you can lock your room if you're 17 years and under and say you're not allowed in my room? I'll get a bulldozer and break that wall down and come into your room. I want to see what's on your iPad, your iPhone, your computer. I want to see what you up to. Amen. And I'll break your head if I see some rubbish there. My God, an African anointing is coming up on me here. Shout manifest. We got to save the future by saving our present. We got to save our great grandchildren by saving our children. We got to save our revelation by restoring our knowledge. We got to save our miracles by producing faith and believing that God is causing manifestation. Clap your hands when I find a breath. And so the man said, don't trouble the master because your daughter has died. Jesus said to Jairus, only believe that all things I think I'm going to have to stand over here and preach. Jesus said to Jairus, only believe that all things are possible to him that believeth. And Jairus said, Lord, help thou mine unbelief. I want to believe, but I don't know how to believe. I want to trust. But I don't know how to trust. I want to go higher. But I've been so used to going all the way down. I want to reach up. But someone keeps on pulling me down. Lord help. My unbelief. Shall Lord increase my faith. That's Luke chapter 17 and verse 11. Lord, teach me how to believe. And so I need some more keys in the, in, the, in the monitors. And so the response was, only believe. And when you get to the destination, the prognosticators and the haters and the, the, the employed weepers. And, 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 and I'm looking for a word that's not derogatory. And, and those who don't love who you is, they have no interest in your future. They despise your position, Jairus, as leader of the synagogue. They hate your baby girl from the day she was born. They making like they crying, but they just like Big Al. The alligator down the road who cries for no reason. Turn to your neighbor, say, stop crying. Pick up yourself. Speak up yourself. Be strong in the Lord. 
and in the power of his might. Amen. The journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. So I'm on my way into manifesting. Say it's been given to me. God gave me life. I'm going to make something of it. God gave me eyes. I'm going to see what others don't see. God gave me ears. I want to hear every morning new mercies you bring. God gave me a mouth. I want to speak a word every day. I've never spoken before. God gave me a hand. I want to write a message to the future. Can I preach something? God gave me feet and my steps are ordered of the Lord. I'm going to walk every day in a new path of righteousness. Shout God you've given to me. To whom much is given, much is required. God, you gave me a dollar. You gave me ten dollars. You gave me a hundred dollars. Teach me how to multiply it. Take the anointing of five talents. Put it on my life. Take my gift of ten pounds. Put it on my life. Take my life of five loaves. Let me feed five thousand. I got a manifest. I'm running out of time. And I don't know which way to turn. So accelerate my life. Turn to your neighbor and say, much has been given. Stop looking. Stop looking to Atlanta. Stop looking to Houston. Stop looking to New York. There's money in Birmingham. There are houses in Birmingham. There are businesses in Birmingham. There are people in Birmingham. There's land. There's lumber. There's mortar. There's bricks. There's hair salons. There's eye doctors. There's jewelry shops. There's wedding parlors. There's celebration centers. It's all up in here. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? We got a savior who is Christ the Lord. I'll save the world from Birmingham. I'll feed Somalia. I'll send supplies to Ukraine. I'll, you play with me. I'll buy one of those jets out there, an Air Force jet and fly nowhere just to prove I'll carry. I believe I can fly. Shout, Lord, I believe. I, you have to learn how to believe that the process is making you strong. You have to believe that your worship is penetrating the stratosphere. You have to believe that every day you're going to another level. You have to believe that every individual around you has been given to add to your life. Turn to someone say, don't take from me. Say, add to me. Add to me. If you can't give me something physical, just give me your blessing. Tell me I'm looking good. Tell me I'm doing well. Tell me God loves me. Tell me I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Tell me. Turn to someone and say, bless me. Don't talk bad about me. Just bless me with your mouth. Open your mouth and bless me. Bless the way I take. Bless my journey. Bless the work of my hands. If you believe in my fried chicken, buy some chicken from me. If you believe in my hair salon, come and give me a shaka car. Come on, Shaka. Come on, Shaka. Show up. Give God a praise, someone. Shout, Lord, I believe. Shout, Lord, I believe. So don't allow tragedy 
to quench your belief. Don't allow loss to stifle your belief. Don't allow sickness to terminate your belief. Don't allow demonic attacks to cause you not to believe. Don't allow witches and warlocks to intimidate you. Simon in Samaria, we got our own power up in here. Don't allow war against your life to intimidate you. Don't allow famine and lack and floods and the dearth to impact you. Don't allow crime and theft to hinder your belief. We have the ascension gifts. And so now, Lord, it's time for you to bless my life in a major way. You have given to me and I'm ready to give back. You have given me joy like a river. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. You have given me wisdom. Open doors for the wisdom in my life. You have given me love. Show me to love my neighbor as myself. You have given me happiness. Teach me how to be happy. You have given me contentment. Lord, help me to be content in all things. You have given me a future. Put some money in my future. Guide my steps in the way I take. Bless me tomorrow. Let my minute do the work of one hour. Let my hour do the work of one day. Let me do in one day what it takes a year for someone else to do. Oh Lord, Lord, let my one effort be the effort of a hundred women. Lord, let my life manifest shall manifest oh yes God you've given me much I'm giving you more if you trust me I'll give you more if you put a song in my mouth I'll sing more if you put a word in my mouth I'll testify if you put a thought in my head I will manifest it shall Lord I'm committed to praise you every day of my life. I will show up. I will show out. Much has been given. I'm giving it all. I'm starting now. And I'm giving it all. I'm giving it. I'm laying it. I need about 300 women to praise God. For the greatest night of your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is given to you. It is given to you. To know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Shog is given to me. Turn to your neighbor, say neighbor, you'll be surprised what I really know. There's things that I know that I don't have to tell you. It's been given to me. Ah, yeah. ah, it's been given to me. It's been given to me. So don't feel sorry for me because it's been given to me. The fact, the fact that I don't say anything doesn't mean that it's not been given. I just work under the radar, but it's been given to me. I am rich. I am well. 
I am blessed. I am healthy. I am anointed. I'm a devil chaser. I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a worshiper. Give him praise. Shout, it is given to me. You're gonna judge me because I had seven devils, but it's given to me to be the first one to see Jesus resurrected. Don't hate on me because where I came from, look at what God has given to me. It's given to me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm, yes. Y- yeah, yes, Lord. My caveat now. And so you raised in a little town in Nazareth. At your birth, there was so much expectation. Angels were singing. Kings were heralding. Shepherds were rejoicing. Watching their flocks by night. There was joy in the heavens. There was there, there was a, a bulent worship in the stratosphere. The cosmic world began to gyrate because born to you this day is a savior who is Christ the Lord. But sisters and brothers, he came to his own and his own knew him not. But the fact you don't recognize more doesn't mean I'm not who I is that I is. Don't judge me because where I was born and and where I live and there might be a taint of Egypt on my garment but I had to get a taste of Egypt so I could pull Egypt out of you and so now you may not accept my teaching but I want you to know right here in Nazareth in my inaugural speech The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has sent me to preach the gospel to the poor. So poor, get ready for manifestation. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives, to set at liberty them that are bruised and number three he has sent me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and so to preach the gospel to the poor is the courtyard to preach deliverance to the captives is the holy place to preach the acceptable year of the Lord is the holiest of holies so while He was hanging on the cross preaching his last message as opposed to his first message. From the first message, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me in his last message. Spirit, Spirit, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The reason I have to forsake you now, you have to manifest as a man you have to show up and show out because from now you're going down to hell you're gonna preach to faithful Abel you're going to preach to Methuselah 
No Hashem Japheth than him. You're going to preach to Canaan, to Isaac, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, the 12 boys, their sons and daughters. You going down there to talk to Elijah and say, I'm the fire. Elisha, I'm the double portion. You, you got to tell Isaiah, I'm the one that was wounded for transgressions, bruised for iniquities. Look at the chastisement of my peace. It's upon me. Look at my back. Healing has begun. Jeremiah, there's no need for you to cry. Don't lament. Daniel, I'm the lion in the lion's den. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. These flames don't hurt me like those flames hurt you. Can I preach for two minutes? Ezekiel, I am the valley of dry bones. Shout manifest. You have to show up. You have to show up. You have to show up. Tell three people, show up, baby. Show up. Refresh. Show up. Show up with the revival. Show up with the move of God. Show up with miracles, signs, wonders. Show up. Buy a mall. Buy a mall. Buy a jet. Show up. Put an in and out. My God, I feel like preaching here. I intend to show up. That devil can't stop me now. I have been called by the power of God to show up and to manifest. Much has been given and much is required. So I'm giving. I'm giving. I'm giving. I'm giving. Take me. Take me, use me, use me, take me, take me, use me, mold me, break me, shake me, direct me, lift me, turn me around by the power of the mighty God. Give God a praise, praise Him hard, praise Him. For what's happening, yokes are breaking, burdens are falling, doors are opening, windows are opening. I'm so glad I've learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me will be with me. Will be with me. Yes. Will be with me all the way. Jesus, Jesus. Oh my God. I trust you, Lord. I'm not trusting in horses, nor in chariots. Jesus, I trust you. Praise him just a little harder. Push a little harder. Manifestation is taking place right now. Can you feel that anointing?
for giving me much. Thank you for giving me something. Thank you for giving me hope. Thank you for giving me belief. Thank you for giving me anointing. Thank you for giving me money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Arise, Apostle! Arise, Apostle! 